Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Foreman Deep Dive. It's a busy content schedule at the moment, isn't it? We've got another deep dive next week as well. But today, we're going to be having Dimitri, uh, better known as Whittless Bird, who's going to talk to us about uh, the work he's been doing on the IPv6 provisioning stack uh, over the last ooh, quite a while. It feels like you've been working and digging around inside this particular DHCP side of it for quite a long time. Um, so I'm really interested to see what you've got to show us. Uh, before I hand over to Dimitri, just some reminders. Uh, you can join in, uh, Freenode IRC, hash the foreman, or the YouTube live chat. You are welcome to, uh, to join in and be a part of the show and ask questions, and I will relay those. Um, also remember that the stream quality is low by default, so you want to hit that settings button and up it to something more sensible. Um, I think Dimitri has some diagrams, so um, you'll probably want a higher quality to make sure that those come across nicely. So with that out of the way, um, Dimitri, what have you got for us? Um, well, thank you, Greg, and thanks everyone for uh, showing up. And today I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about uh, supporting IP version 6 and uh, DHCP version 6 in particular for bare metal provisioning. So this conversation we're having today is not going to go into management of hosts over IP version 6. So it's just uh, this not so small sliver of functionality. Um, so let me open the first slide. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about uh, how DHCP version 6 exchange works or how uh, address configuration and uh, feature configuration works uh, when IP version 6 is used. Uh, then we're going to have uh, a short demo uh, showing how to basically boot a host from bare metal to Linux kernel. And then hopefully we will have time for questions should you have any. So, um, IP version 6. It's um, address configuration and uh, option configuration under IP version 6 is drastically different from IP version 4. In many ways, it's a dramatic improvement. Uh, in some ways, it makes our life harder, um, like host identities, for example, um, are quite a bit different and probably harder for us. Um, so there are two ways to configure IP address, actually three, but we're not going to talk about manual configuration. Uh, it's a stateless configuration, and then there is DHCP uh, version 6. So this demo is going to use both, but the stateless auto configuration is basically a requirement of IPXE. So depending on what that second stage uh, of uh, provisioning relies on uh, what, what firmware or what image, uh, it may or may not be required. Uh, DHCP version 6 on its own uh, can provide host with IP address, uh, IP version 6 address uh, options, uh, with the exception of uh, default router. But again, that's not really our concern for the purposes of this functionality. Uh, in uh, the ways in which the Spirit version 6 is much nicer uh, to deal with is, first of all, it's uh, entirely UDP-based, so we're not actually reading or writing uh, from the wire. Uh, the server solicitation address, it's, uh, it's a multicast address, uh, so we exactly know the address and the port that we're supposed to listen on. Uh, and uh, Pixie itself, or any really sort of booting uh, is also very trivial to detect. It's just one option, a DHCP option, which is called boot file URL. And uh, basically, if it's present, then we assume that the host, uh, a host is trying to actually provision itself or boot itself. So here you have on this slide uh, a diagram of uh, the exchange that's going to take place in the demo. So the client is obviously a client. I guess the labels are self-explanatory. Um, uh, I'll go very briefly over it, and then we can return to it if you have any questions. So the, the whole exchange starts with a client uh, requesting uh, or soliciting server for IP address and options. So one of the interesting things to us is that the client asks for a boot file URL option. So in the demo, I'll, I'll point, point it to you. Uh, at which point, uh, we, the server, we respond 
to 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 this request and uh, we provide values for the options that were requested if they're configured uh, then uh, the client repeats uh, the, uh, the the previous question but this time it's actually a request uh, which we confirm with a reply and at this point uh, the client will have a boot file URL uh, or URL to boot from which it can use so at this point, the, the firmware goes uh, to that URL. So we're using HTTP boot in this uh, in this demo. Um, so it goes and fetches up the, the firmware or the second stage firmware, whatever it's called, uh, from the server, uh, at which point it's IPXE, uh, it takes over. And one of the first things it does, it uh, I think, I believe it does uh, router, uh, solicit router advertisement uh, from um, that's where the stateless auto configuration of IP version 6 takes place. Um, so it solicits for router advertisement um, uh, to, I think, mainly just to get the, the prefix, subnet prefix, at which point it auto configures its IP address. And then it sends uh, an information request to our server again, at which point we serve it with uh, IPXE configuration file, again, over, uh, over HTTP which basically contains the URLs to fetch uh, Linux kernel. And at this point, uh, IPXC puts the kernel. So that's pretty easy, I guess. Took a little while to get it working. But um, let's take a look at it in how it works. So let me put the, the image. Uh, so what I'm using in this demo is um, uh, libvirt, uh, virtual, virtual machine with Tiana Core uh, firmware. Uh, this firmware is not stock. Uh, I had to recompile it to enable IP version 6 and HTTP version 6, HTTP boot version 6. Uh, but other than that, it's nothing else was done to it. Uh, same with IPXE, I believe. Uh, I don't remember at this point exactly, but I think I actually had to uh, recompile it to enable uh, IP version 6 support. Um, so anyway, uh, in this window, you can see that we are running on uh, the HTTP server. Uh, let me just restart it. So there we are. Uh, somewhere else on, on the network, I have Apache uh, server, uh, Apache HTTPD configured to use IP version 6 only and serve pages over IP version 6. And in yet another uh, server, we actually have uh, RADVD, which is uh, needed for uh, IP version 6 uh, stateless auto config that IP, uh, IPXE uses. Anyway, so let's try to boot. Uh, so this is going to be using uh, HTTP boot over IP version 6. Uh, because I cannot reuse this VM between starts. Um, oh, that was actually quite quick. Um, uh, I'll try to keep up, but I probably won't. Um, so first thing happened was that uh, the firmware uh, picked up address uh, from the DHCP server, and then it got the boot file URL as well. Let me just show them to you. And now, obviously, IPX is booting. Um, so, oh, or didn't. Sorry, I actually didn't see what happened. Uh, uh, it looked like you're trying an IPv4 address. Oh, it was. Um, hang on. I can disable IP version 4 for good. Um, oops. So now it won't get IP version 4 at all. OK, let's try it again. Sorry about this. Live demos, always fun. Yep. Sort of got I actually 
tried it just before the demo, it worked fine. All right, once again, so it may actually take a bit of time for it to, to get to that IP uh, version 6 request. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but I think it, uh, for first boot, it, it takes a bit of time. Um, so again, just to remind you, uh, what's going to happen is that it will send a solicit uh, to get IP address and uh, particularly boot file URL option to which we will reply. Oh, there we are. Uh, and then I'll just let it finish and then, then I'll just scroll back and comment on what, what happened. So now it's going to get, yeah, now it's going to access that uh, I'll put file URL it received. Uh, it's going to load IPixie, which it just did. Uh, IPixie now configures, uh, auto configures uh, IP version 6 address. And in a moment, we should see it asking again for boot file URL. And there we are. Uh, and now it's booting Linux. So I'll let it get to the, to the screen and then I'll I'll scroll back and show you, just talk a little bit about what actually went on the wire. Just a little bit longer. Um, meanwhile, you can see that uh, we have a bunch of activity going on on the network. Uh, so for example, there is a packet here, uh, information request sent by someone. I should probably log the, the MAC addresses. But because it didn't have a um, boot file URL option, we, we basically don't care about it. Anyway, here you are. The Linux is booting. I'm going to stop it. And we'll go back and talk a little bit of what actually happened. So the, the first packet you're seeing here, um, so this is packet uh, here, packet one. This is a solicit. So the interesting thing here is, uh, where is option six? Yeah. Uh, no. no. So option six uh, is a request for options option. Uh, and it's basically a list of option IDs that where a uh, client is interested in receiving. So uh, 59 here is the boot file URL. Uh, we oblige. So this is our response, the next packet. Uh, so number two is uh, advertisement. And uh, one of the first things we do is we send uh, option 59 on boot file URL, and you can see the ASCII representation here. Uh, back to the client. Uh, I think um, other stuff that, that I send back uh, is possibly DNS server address, maybe something else. I don't remember at this point. Um, then, uh, so ignore this uh, packet 11, which is information request. It wasn't from our client. Uh, so then the client sends. Uh, uh, this time it sends a request. Uh, again, it's basically a, a duplicate of the original uh, solicitation. And we send a reply here. So seven is reply. Again, it's it's a copy essentially of the advertisement we, we sent originally. Uh, then the client asks, tells us that it's not going to use the address it received from us uh, anymore. And we uh, here we again we confirm that, and a little bit later on, so we get an information request packet that's IPixi uh, asking for the uh, the URL the boot file URL to boot from, which we again send to it. This is IPixi script, and that's really it. Um, um, yeah, so. I want to talk really briefly about what software is actually used in this demo and to what purpose. So Brad, uh, Brad network prefix at the very least, possibly a default router. But again, it doesn't really need it. Um, I'm not sure system. if it was me or you, but the, I lost your sound for about 30 seconds there, just as you switched to this slide. Okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just start over. Just, um, just in case. It might have been my internet connection, but just in case, so that we don't want to lose it for the video. So. Yeah, no worries. 
So the Brad VD is uh, a Linux implementation for Slack. Uh, uh, it's uh, auto config address auto configuration for IP version six. Um, it's needed here just to support IPixie, which relies on it either to get uh, network prefix or possibly default router. Um, I don't actually know, uh, but yeah. So Apache HTTPD is running over IP version six, and it serves uh, everything, uh, all the files that client ask were served over HTTP, so no TFTP was used in this demo. Uh, the netboot is uh, is a small project designed specifically to support, uh, well, originally support uh, Pixie over IP version four. So I've been extending it to support IP version six. Uh, uh, right now, it supports uh, HTTP boot only. Uh, I Actually, no, it should support TFTP boot. There's no difference because all we do is we give a URL. Um, still, there's plenty of work to do, but at this point, I can at least demo it. Uh, Tiana Core of firmware, like I said, it required a recompile after enabling IP version 6 support with HTTP boot over uh, IP version 6. And again, IPixie, I do not remember if I needed to recompile it or not. I believe I did. Again, to enable IP version six. Um, so that's really it. Cool. We do have a few questions, um, mainly from Daniel. Uh, so he's first of all, he's curious about where you can get the Tiana Core firmware with IPv6, or at least instructions to rebuild it. Um, do you have any tips or notes on that? Um, everything I got was from Tiana Core uh, site. They actually have a pretty decent wiki. Uh, but basically, once you take a look at how to build your own version, it becomes pretty, well, not necessarily trivial, but it's not particularly hard. You edit a config file for the distribution you're interested uh, in. So for Libbeard, it's OVFM or something like that. Uh, and you basically enable IP version 6 and the HTTP boot in the config file, then you rebuild, uh, which takes, I don't know, 5, 10 minutes, and Bob's your uncle. Fair enough. Okay. Um, certainly, uh, if, you, uh, if you drop me a copy of that wiki link, I'll put it in the show description afterwards, and then okay. people watching this later can, can grab it. Um, he also wants to know um, how you choose which firmware is... You know, how do you get to choose the firmware before you boot it? Is it just uh, coded well, at the moment? Weird, I don't believe there's a lot of choice. Uh, I mm -hmm. think uh, Tiana Core, I think there might be another provider, but Tiana Core is by far the most popular. And I also believe this is the, the firmware that's used by various developers when they need to deal with IP version 6. So it's kind of like a, a benchmark one. Yeah. So that's, that's what I used. Fair enough. Um, and obviously, you did this with um, IPixie and HTTP, um, but TFTP could also be used, right? Um, so from uh, DHCP uh, version 6 point of view, we do not care at all, because all we really do is we provide boot file URL option value. Uh, so that's really the main purpose of this uh, bit of software. Uh, so after that, it's what infrastructure you have in place. Uh, mind you, the interesting thing about HTTP is obviously that you can use HTTPS. Of course. Um, so, but essentially, the key here is you get as far as IPixie, and then choice is yours, right? You can do whatever you like at that point. Pretty much, you, yeah. Uh, you supposedly, can... supposedly uh, one should be able to use the, the Grub images, Grub2, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it proved a bit difficult, so I couldn't. Uh, it could be because I need to rebuild graph images or for whatever other reason. So I basically kind of simplified my my life and just went with the route that other people uh, yeah, sure. got to work. Well, you got something to work, and then if you need to expand it, right? I mean, fair yeah. enough. Um, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's getting to the iPixie that looks like the hard bit. Um, do, do Daniel's uh, clarified asking about um, the, he was actually asking about the boot manager program when he said firmware uh, or, or how you, you know, you, you, you had a, a choice of what to boot, right? You had something you were interacting with. Yes. Is that, is so, that just part of the Tiana Core, core form, firmware? Yes, that's, that's Tiana Core. So you can uh, 
like depending on your con compile options, et cetera, et cetera. So you can get an option to drop in into command line, or you can get uh, an option to drop into into this uh, UI screen. Cool. I and presumably you, you, you recompile it with your default option in place so that it just speaks yeah. straight to IPv6. Uh, yeah, um, I, I found it a bit difficult to actually make it boot straight into IP6. And because I have a working DHCP version 4 server on my network, that proved uh, to be a, up all the time. Yeah. quite a bit of a headache. So I just manually intercept it. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it probably will try DHCP version 4 uh, right now. First, yeah. and then we'll switch to IP six. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so I guess the the big question, uh, and this has been asked uh, on the channel as well, is how how where do we go with this? How do we integrate this? I mean, we're a form. We're talking here from the point of view of the form and channel, right? So, how do you where do you see this going in terms of form? So uh, there is a couple of threads now about IP version six support in Foreman. Um, so they're pretty long. My position is that. Uh, provided that there are difficulties in supporting IP version 6 uh, in form and the way we were uh, managing IP version 4 uh, hosts and uh, uh, bare metal boot or pixie boot process, I think we need to split them completely and treat them as separate entities or separate areas of functionality. So this work addresses uh, pixie booting. Uh, so the interesting bit about that uh, that NetBoot uh, server, DHCP server, is that it provides a way to interface with Foreman via API. So we basically can uh, off offload all decision making to Foreman, which is very nice, uh, which we do not have with any of the stock uh, servers that are currently available. Another interesting thing, uh, again, that's DHCP version 6, and it's nice to, to deal with because it allows for multiple DHCP servers, servers uh, to coexist on one network. And you can actually control uh, who's, uh, which server reply is going to be used by the client. So it's, uh, nice. yeah, it's, uh, it's a preference option. And we basically return it. I, I'm not doing it right now, but yeah, we can return it together with our replies. So in which case the client will, instead of just randomly choosing or trying to guess, uh, it will actually use the one with the highest precedence. Cool. So, so the summary there is that basically we, we need a whole different orchestration um, system for this. So. Yes. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, you know, it's fine. We have enough other types of orchestration. It really ought to be possible to add more of them, right? Um, so yeah, well, that's fair enough. And, and to be honest, having some separation between them would, I guess, reduce confusion as well. Like if you're trying to troubleshoot this stuff, trying to work your way through that that orchestration layer, which can handle both. Ha having a single layer which handles both v4 and v6 would be complex. <laughs> well, they're, they're so different. I don't think it makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out, uh, because we actually can use HTTP boot uh, with uh, IP version 6 or DHCP version 6. Uh, it actually makes an interesting, uh, it can potentially enable interesting approach to uh, to provisioning uh, because we can actually serve uh, templates based on the metadata we can receive from the client. So basically, if we tell, uh, if this piece of software tells Foreman that the client will be coming with this MAC address, U, UID, DUID, et cetera, et cetera, then Foreman can actually tailor responses um, to that client, uh, instead of trying to create files on TFTP server, which I think is like very, very convenient and very, very nice to work. With. Yeah, yeah. Let me um, let me just ask you a question though about that. So obviously, you know, we look at this list of software. Most of these things are fairly standard, right? RadVD, Apache, iPixie, I get those. Yeah. Um, your netboot code. What led you to write that? Is there nothing like that out there, or is it written because you wanted that form and integration? What 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 was the path there? Um, well, I spent a significant amount of time looking at various uh, DHCP servers that support uh, IP version six or DHCP version six rather, um, and the problems. All of them essentially have issues. Uh, integration issues, that is, not necessarily issues that you would run into in production. Um, so one of the main issues is that host identification is 
quite hard with, in my opinion, quite hard with uh, IP version six, just because it changes. Uh, so, for example, if you have a host with uh, multiple interfaces, and uh, let's say a firmware is booting, you don't actually know what UID is going to get uh, because any of the uh, UID generated uh, using MAC address can be used. So if you have three, three NICs, any of the three UIDs potentially can be used. Uh, so if you have a permanent uh, DUID, then it's generated once during uh, OS installation, but you actually cannot know it uh, ahead of time. And depending on what software is used, uh, you're actually going to get different ones, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so DHCPD, uh, Internet Software Consortium DHCPD, uh, has issues with supporting uh, IP version 6 hosts over OMAPI. Uh, so other hosts uh, have more limited integration. Basically, I got to the point where I was looking at this variety of DHCP servers, and I was thinking, well, each of them will require sometimes very different approaches to integrating. And then I tried to minimize the problem, uh, and I ended up basically distilling it that we need exhibiting first and foremost. And we potentially can offload IP address management, et cetera, et cetera, to servers themselves, DHCP servers just because all of them these days implement this functionality. Um, so uh, after that, I basically started looking for a server that uh, has some sort of API that uh, can let us offload decision-making to to us, to Foreman. And there's only one project, which is called Netboot, uh, which is was written by someone at Google, uh, but they didn't have IP version 6 support, and so I started adding it. Right, so this is this is a fork with a, a fair bit of extra code in it, basically. Well, um, I don't think it's going to be a fork. No, no I, I mean a fork in the GitHub sense, not a, not as an. I've right. started a yes. new project. Um, yes. I, just because obviously you put the link to your repo, and and I've not been to that URL yet, so I didn't realize you'd you'd um, been consuming another project. Right. Um, so no, that makes sense now. Okay, that's cool. That's really interesting. And so that that then brings us back to this would be then some like TFTP, right? We'd run some lightweight service along with the form and proxy, and we'd have yeah. control of that. Yeah, Exactly. And we can deploy it together with proxy. We can do it one per network segment. So it basically solves a lot of problems we're having right now. Mm. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it's, and it's essentially stateless. So the only state it keeps is, or may potentially keep, uh, is the pool, address pool information. It doesn't actually need anything else. Fair enough. Um, Perry, to another question that I'm just going to read out because I'm not actually sure. I'm, I'm my IPv6 knowledge is shaky to say the best, so I'm just going to read this one out. Um, but he's asking, what about ISC ISC KEA? Is that I presume that's another server? Yeah, it's the new implementation of um, or new DHCP server by Internet Software Consortium. So basically, mm -hmm. my understanding is that they rewrote their DHCP server from scratch. Uh, and this is uh, Kia. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know much about it. Uh, it's a significantly different. Uh, so starting from the fact that they use C++ to write it, uh, it uses database backend. Uh, but again, it doesn't really answer all our questions. I mean, yeah, we probably can interface with it, but then we need to interface with a bunch of other servers. While our sliver of functionality is so tiny, then why not just mm -hmm on something that solves our particular problem instead of just, I don't know, embedding ourselves into a bunch of different servers. Like one one of the things uh, what what met, made me to think uh, this way is that I personally uh, uh, created an uh, interface for Microsoft DHCP server, which was a lot of work. Um, so I maintained uh, DHCPD uh, code. Uh, I wrote plugins for or updated plugins for a bunch of other providers. And it's while not necessarily all of them take a lot of work, but together it's a significant effort. So if we can save time on that, then why not do it? So this way mm -hmm. we maintain actually very reasonable amount of code. It's a nice. lot of code. And I guess you could argue it's also kind of the Unix philosophy, right? We're taking one small 
bit of the problem that we need yeah. to solve and doing it well with a small piece of code. And you could still use a wider and larger project for more network management. Exactly. So, so anyone who, who actually relies on existing solution, be it DHCPD or Kia or what have you, uh, they still continue using that. We're just basically taking over Pixie and we literally ignore every other request. So like you said in um, uh, like 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 you saw in the in the in the demo, so periodically there are packets that do not contain good file URL options. So we basically do not respond to them. Does that could that cause conflicts on the network? No. If, why, why would it? It's well, if, I mean, I mean if, if it does contain the boot file URL request, is that something uh, that something else is going to respond to? Well, that's where the the preference option uh, gets in, right? So basically, we want to take over all uh, boot file URL responses. So we just provide, for example, the highest possible priority precedence mm -hmm. for these packets. And that's that's something set by the server. So you can yes, yes. So it's not something that the client has to has to uh, deal with. Okay. Um, so the only potential is where someone's configured their server to have the same highest level of precedence, but that, that yeah. presumably is not the default. So no, DHCP version six is actually very very civilized compared to version four. So it's actually quite <laughs> nice to work with. It's a nice choice of words. <laughs> Uh, I like the word civilized. Um, so, okay. Um, well, I think I've run out of questions. I think the channel appears to have run out of questions. Um, so I will just give it a few more seconds uh, just to see if anything else pops up. Uh, the stream is usually about 30 seconds behind. Um, but that's been really, really interesting. Uh, and I'll be very interested to see where it, it goes next. I have to admit, um, my IPv6 knowledge is not where it should be. Um, I just haven't had the time. Um, but it's something I need to fix. So maybe I put that on this year's to-do list sometime. <laughs> but in the meantime, everything's gone quiet. So it just uh, just leaves me to, uh, to put up the closing screen. So uh, thank you very much, Dimitri, for your time today. Uh, thanks to all our viewers for watching. Thanks for all the excellent questions. Um, you know where to find us if you want more of this kind of thing. YouTube, Twitter, come to us on IRC or the mailing lists. In the meantime, however, thanks for watching. Do take care. Um,